All right, let's continue our journey in learning about COVID models in Python. So, so far we have learned about the SIR model, which is a compartmental model that splits everyone in a population into three groups, susceptible, infected, or removed. So people who are removed cannot be infected. Uh, people who are susceptible can be infected. Last video, we learned about how to move between being susceptible and infected and infected and removed. We learned about the effective contact rate, uh, which is the rate at which infected and uninfected people or susceptible people come into contact with one another times the risk of infection. So how likely is that disease to spread whenever there's contact between an uninfected and an infected person. And additionally, we learned about the removal rate, which is one divided by the recovery period. So if we have a four day long recovery period, every day about 25% of our people uh, will go from being infected to being recovered. So what we are gonna do now is we're gonna learn a little bit about R0. So R0 is a number that you see in the news a lot when people are talking about how bad COVID is or is not. So right here, R0, uh, it's usually defined as the average number of new infections generated by each infected person. Um, so for example, R0 of you know a little over two, below one, plummeted below one, uh, you can find these numbers in a lot of different news stories and a lot of different models really disagree about what the R0 is of COVID. So we're gonna learn how R0 is computed and why it might make sense that different models disagree about what the R0 is for this disease. So um, this is R0 is the basic reproductive number or the basic reproductive ratio. And it is an expression of how contagious or how likely to spread uh, a disease is. Now, math-wise, it's just the effective contact rate, so this right here, the rate at which people are becoming infected, uh, divided by the removal rate. So it's pretty simple mathematically. Let's step through an example. So let's say that uh, I have a 100% risk of infection. I have a, a terrible, terrible disease, and I meet one person every day. So I'm going to take my one person every day and multiply that by my 1.0 risk of infection. That right there is going to be my effective contact rate. Now let's say along with this, it takes me three days to get over the disease. So if it takes me three days to get over the disease, we are gonna calculate our removal rate, which is going to be one divided by those three days. So if I have a 100% risk of infection and I meet one person every day, and it takes me three days to get over the disease, that means on the first day, I'm going to infect a person. On the second day, I am going to infect a person. And on the third day, I am going to infect another person because every single time I meet that one person that I meet every day, I have a 100% uh, chance to pass it on. And because it takes me three days to get over the disease, for every single one of those three days, I am going to be spreading that disease to one other person. So the basic reproductive, basic reproductive rate is the effective contact rate divided by the removal rate. So my effective contact rate is 1.0 and I'm gonna divide that by 0 0.3, which is gonna give me about three. So anything that has a R0 of three is going to be bad because this sounds like a pretty bad disease as it stands right now. So let's try it again. Um, let's say that we have a 50% risk of infection. And let's say that I meet one person every day. And it takes me four days 
to get over the disease. Now, my question for you is, is this better or worse than this one? It, I have a lower risk of infection, so whenever I meet people, there's less of a risk I infect them, but it takes me longer to get over the disease. The basic reproductive rate allows us to kind of combine all of this into one number that just makes sense. So the effective contact rate is going to be my one person every day times my 0.5 risk of infection, which gives me 0.5. And then my removal rate is going to be one divided by four days. Now, in order to get my basic reproductive rate, it's my effective contact rate divided by my removal rate. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5 divided by 0.25. And that is gonna give me 2.0. So according to R0, this disease is less bad than this disease here. It's less likely to spread, it will not spread as much. All right, let's do it again. Let's say I have a really low chance of infection. So let's say a 2% risk of infection. Um, but let's say I meet two people every day and uh, it takes me 14 days to recover. My effective contact rate is going to be two people per day times my 0 0.2 risk of infection. So two people times 0 0.02, which gives me 0 0.04. Uh, and then it takes me 14 days to recover. So my removal rate is one divided by 14 which gives me about 0.07. So how bad is this one? I'm gonna take my 0 0.04 divided by my 0 0.07. And that is going to give me uh, 0.57. Actually, let's say that I'm gonna be so it's gonna take me three weeks to recover. Let's just push this number up a little bit. So I'm gonna say a removal rate of 21 days, which puts me at about 0.05, which will give me a basic reproductive rate of 0.8. So the biggest idea behind the basic reproductive number is, is this number above one or not? So, if it's above one, the disease will spread. If it's below one, the disease will die out. Let's just walk through, let's say is the R zero, just so we remember what we're talking about. Let's walk through an example. Um, so let's say we'll go back to our very first example. We have a 100% uh, risk of infection and I meet uh, one person a day. It takes me three days to get over it. So what we did was 1% risk of infection times, uh, let's say one person a day times a 1.0 risk of infection uh, divided by it takes me three days to get over it. So that gave me a 3.0. Uh, let's break this out. Let's break this out. So my effective contact rate, my removal rate of one divided by three, which gives me an R0 of one divided by 0.3. So because this is Three, there we go. Uh, because this is greater than zero, the or greater than one, sorry, the disease will spread. Now, same thing for the other ones. Uh, let's try it with something that is a little less spready though. Let's say that uh, I'm sick but I'm only sick for one day. So my effective contact rate, 
So uh, it's the same as before. 100% risk of infection. I meet one person a day, but it takes me one day to get over it. So my effective contact rate is going to be one person a day times my risk of infection. And my removal rate, my removal rate is going to be one divided by one day. Therefore, my R0 is going to be my effective contact rate divided by my removal rate of one. So what's happening here is every day I'm sick, I get one other person sick. But by the next day, I'm, I'm healed or dead. So I can't spread it anymore. But the thing is that that person who got sick, they then get one more person sick on their next day. But then by the second day, they're healed. And then that person that they got sick then gets one more person sick. And that person that they got sick gets one more person sick. And so it just ends up being a chain of people getting each other sick one day at a time, one person at a time. So it never spreads. It never gets bigger. It never dies out because they're always meeting one person. They're always giving that infection away. But by the next day, they're over it. So they're not able to spread it. So let's make this a little bit crazier. Let's say that instead of uh, a 100% risk of infection, let's say we have a 50% risk. No, let's actually say we have 100%. Let's say it takes you half a day to get over it. So instead of taking an entire day to go over. Let's say that every day you get sick and you're healed by 2 p.m. So what is this going to mean for our disease? So my effective contact rate is I'm still meeting one person every day and I am still 100% infecting that person if I am infected. My removal rate is it takes me one day Half a day to get over it, change that to half a day. My removal rate is one divided by 0 0.5, so that gives me a removal rate of two. And so now my R0 is 1.0 divided by 2.0, which gives me an R0 of 0.5. So what this means is statistically speaking, I infect 0.5 people every day. So that would mean I infect half of a person every day and that person, if they're infected, infects half of a person and they infect half a person, half a person, half a person. So it keeps getting smaller and smaller all the time. And you're like, what? Math, I don't get it. And I'm like, how about this? If you take half a day to get over your disease, what happens is let's say 2 p.m. is when you're recovered. So if you meet someone before 2 p.m., if you go out to brunch, if you go to brunch with someone, you're infected and you infect them. But if you go to dinner with someone, you're no longer infected, so you don't infect them. And so when we say we have a 0.5 R0, uh, what's happening is, uh, you know, it all depends on chance as to whether you get to infect this person or not. Uh, statistically speaking, mathematically speaking, you infect half a person. Uh, but think of it this way, as in you flip a coin as to whether you're getting brunch with someone or dinner with someone. Uh, and if you get dinner with them, you're not infected, so you don't infect them and the disease dies out. Uh, if you are infected because you get brunch with them, then the disease has one more day to attempt to survive. But the idea being, if the removal rate is larger than the contact rate, if the rate at which people are becoming uninfected, the rate at which people are moving from infected to removed is larger than the rate at which people are moving from susceptible to infected, if the removal rate is bigger than the effective contact rate, your R0 is gonna be below one, and as a result, the disease is going to die out.
So R0 is usually thought of as how many cases an infected person will create. Now R0 is problematic is not really the term for it, but it's not set in stone. Um, in this Atlantic article, uh, R0 is not a magical immutable property of the virus itself. When someone talks about how contagious a virus is using R0, you think of it and it's been displayed as something being endemic to the virus. Here's how the virus works. But if we look at how it's built, it is built by combining the effective contact rate and the removal rate. And if we think about what the contact rate is, the contact rate is the risk of infection combined with the number of people that you meet every day. So risk of infection, a lot of that's gonna deal with the disease, but a lot of it is gonna deal with, let's say, are you wearing a mask? Are you washing your hands? How e easy is it to actually spread the disease from one person to another? Um, and additionally, how many people you meet every day? So if we're on lockdown in New York City right now, I'm not meeting very many people every day. And as a result, the effective contact rate is going down. So the recovery rate is probably gonna stay the same. Um, maybe you could heal people a little bit faster, but generally speaking, R0 is not something that is specific to the virus because it combines the risk of infection, which is a little bit the virus, a little bit society, uh, and then also it's the number of people that you have contact with. So even though it seems like a nice simple number, that number is going to change over the course of, uh, let's say not an infection, over the course of the pandemic, R0 will change based on uh, where it's happening, when it's happening, who it's happening to. So um, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna move on to actually figuring out how to use those first numbers. R0 is a fun number to look at. Um, it's not very good in terms of specifically modeling. Um, we're gonna look at the effective contact rate and the removal rate, and we're gonna make some fun charts with it. So stay tuned. <laughs> 